In 1959, 21 African-American boys died in a school fire in Wrightsville. Now, decades later, you won't find a grave marker for them, nor will you find an official cause of the fire. It's a story possibly unknown or forgotten by many. But it's a chapter in history that's far from being closed. For the last five decades, every year has been 1959 for Frank Lawrence. For the majority of his life, Lawrence has been trying to solve one of Arkansas's greatest mysteries. Nobody ever knew it existed because of uh, the ability of the state of Arkansas to do such a fantastic job at covering it up. March 5th, 1959, 69 African-American boys ages 13 to 17, including Lawrence's 15-year-old brother, Lindsey Cross, were padlocked into their dormitory for the night at the Negro Boys Industrial School in Wrightsville. Around 4 a.m., a fire mysteriously ignited, forcing the boys to fight and claw their way out of the burning building. But it was a carefully calculated murder that involved 21 boys, but it was designed to kill all 69 that were housed inside of this dormitory. Lawrence's life's mission has been to uncover the truth surrounding what he calls Arkansas's secret holocaust, which coincidentally is also the focal point of author Griffin Stockley's latest work. That most of the uh, boys who uh, were killed uh, had run back to a corner of the building. When the smoke cleared that March morning, the 21 boys that had burned to death were found piled on top of one another in the corner of the dormitory. The 48 that had survived managed to escape by prying off mesh metal screens from two windows. If you look at the diagram, you can see that uh, although there were a couple of doors, uh, in fact, we know that uh, there was nobody there to unlock the doors. The horrific event briefly made headlines that also brought attention to the squalor and deplorable conditions the boys had been subjected to. The boys uh, went around in rags. They had one 30-gallon water tank to, for them to use uh, for, to take baths. According to Stockley, the boys in the school were committed for being orphaned, homeless, or for committing offenses described as mischief and alleged petty crimes. The school and the treatment of the children became a fiery representation of segregation within the South during the Jim Crow era. The whole part of this is about our history of white supremacy and the way African Americans have been discriminated against historically in Arkansas. I mean, you know, it was never separate but equal. It was always unequal. Now, almost 60 years after the horrific fire, both Lawrence and Stockley are hoping to spark a fresh look at the fire and its cause. For the fact that it was in such deteriorated condition that probably the fire started uh, b because of the wiring. So was it gross negligence that led to the death of the boys? Or were they burned alive intentionally? So everyone wants to conclude that it was an accident to prevent putting any more embarrassment on the state of Arkansas and the efforts of Orville Faubus. Two years before the fire, Little Rock and Governor Orville Faubus gained national attention in 1957 during the desegregation crisis at Central High School. Faubus again made headlines when he shut down Little Rock High Schools for the 1958-1959 school year, often referred to as the lost year. Lawrence believes the events that followed added fuel to the Wrightsville School's flames. This Holocaust and this murder is a seminal event that was designed to trigger an action by the African-American community to say, oh no, we're not going to try to integrate schools anymore. We'll go ahead and be separate but equal, but we're going to stop this desegregation activity. Prior to the fire, Governor Fabes had toured the Wrightsville School and saw firsthand the conditions in which the boys lived, but made no recommendations for change. However, newspaper articles reported Fabes appeared disturbed by the deaths of the 21 boys, calling the fire inexcusable. 
He immediately called for a hearing to determine who may have been responsible for the deaths of the children. The very morning that these boys were killed, they're dismantling this whole scene with hoses, rakes, and shovels. They're tearing it apart like they're trying to cover up something. The school staff and superintendent all gave their accounts of what happened that night of the fire, noting that the boys had been locked in and left unsupervised for the night. Conversely, a Pulaski County grand jury found that numerous individuals and agencies were responsible, but ultimately they returned no criminal charges. Unfortunately, it's just like blaming everybody and, and nobody. In the meantime, in an ironic twist, the land in which the school stood is now the Arkansas Department of Correction Facility Wrightsville Unit, where you won't find a plaque to indicate the boys ever lived or died there. That the bodies are in here in this open space where there's, there's no markers. The same omission exists at their supposed mass grave, which can be found at the Haven of Rest Cemetery in Little Rock. The bodies was brought out here and a mass grave was dug, just a series of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, through 14, and the bodies were interred there. According to cemetery records, hours after the fire, what little remained of the boys who died was taken to a local funeral home. According to Stephanie Webb, several sources say the boys' body parts were brought over wrapped in newspaper. Uh, most of the bodies were brought to Dubison Funeral Home which of course now no longer exists. Um, and as far as how they were received, I mean, there's a lot of questionable stuff. The parents of the boys could come in and pick out body parts a la carte and claim that they were their children. Seven of the 21 boys were buried privately by their families. The other 14 are supposedly buried in a mass grave. Their brief funeral and burial paid for by the state of Arkansas. After the ceremony was over, the family members were ushered away from the cemetery and not allowed to view the internment into the burial plot. So they never saw coffins go into the ground. And as for a grave marker. Because the records indicate um, and marker. It had and marker on, on the records. Bronze Memorial for the 14 boys who were buried. That's what it says. So where is it? I have no idea. I have no idea. So what is the truth surrounding the death and burial of the Wrightsville boys? The truth is, we may never know. But Lawrence and Stockley both hope their upcoming books expose the perception that Arkansas apparently put little value on those young boys' lives. We, we have to feel some pain at some point uh, about these things, as opposed to dismissing them as you know, kind of an academic exercise or just part of our pathetic history of race relations in, in Arkansas and the South. The Claims Commission ruled in September of 1959 to award the states of each of the 21 boys $2,500. But Lawrence says his family only received $1,400. In the meantime, he hopes one day to gain the rights to exhume his brother's remains for a proper burial. Both Lawrence's book, Locked In and Burned, America's Secret Holocaust, and Stockley's book, Black Boys Burning, both come out later this year.